What's up guys, it's your boy Saint. Today we're gonna to break down a sample I just finished in the style of a vintage kind of owl hug live instrument style sample. Here's a preview of the finished sample right now. Saint. All right, so now we're in the session and I'm gonna break things down kind of one by one in groups. So we've got the vocals, uh, which I have here, and then we have the instruments, which I used a nylon guitar and a kalimba, super, super cool sounding instruments and effects. We've got the percussions and the textures, a bass, which is actually just my guitar tuned down a full uh, octave. And then this ending section, after I talk about the mastering chain at the end, is going to be a little gem on how to create your own vinyl sounds and textures, just unlimited vinyl sounds and textures. So stay tuned for that. Shout out my boy Kid Capone. He's got a really dope sample called Alien Gates to Heaven uh, in the key of D minor. I kind of modeled this sample to that one and I recommend doing this if you guys have any dope samples that you want to kind of emulate. Just drop it into your DAW, listen to it, compare mixes, try to pick out little things. Even better if you have the stems and then you can obviously solo each thing one by one. Compare mix and ideas and like where things sit with other samples that are already done. But yeah, let's go ahead and get into this. So here's the vocals bounced just by themselves. So it's pretty straightforward. It's nothing crazy. It's more of like a background thing. It's not very intelligible like what I'm saying. Um, all this is, is it's just a bunch of vocal stacks. Here's the, uh, the main vocal with no effects. And so all I did to get the end product was I used a bunch of, um, a little bit of auto-tune, actually I will say, uh, just in the key. Any auto-tune works, doesn't have to be meta-tune. Um, Alter Boy, Micro Shift, Really just to get like the formant down, get the, the wide spread of the micro shift. And then everything you'll see here is sent to a bus. Uh, that's my verb bus and we'll talk about that at the end. Um, but yeah, essentially this is just a bunch of the same vocal take, just affected differently with different pitches and micro shift, uh, different formants to get it to sound like, you know, a, a little, almost like a choir of, of people singing. And then that's what you end up with with the final vocal. And then the, the stack of everything, I did a summing stack so I could add more effects. So the entire group has a high pass, low pass, and then a little plate, pretty, pretty aggressive plate. And then again, sent to the verb bus that we'll talk about in a little bit. But yeah, that's pretty much it for the vocals. Let's go ahead and go to the instruments now. So now we've got the main guitar, which is just my nylon string guitar. Here's what it sounds like dry. <laughs> Nothing crazy, pretty straightforward. Here it is with all the effects. So all I've got going on here is a bunch of EQ, just taking out some of the frequencies I didn't like. A lot of times you guys will see me using this slate compressor. It's really awesome. I just try to hit anywhere from like one to three here on the VU meter. RC20 is uh, super key in a lot of my samples right now. I, I'm really having fun messing with some settings here and kind of creating my own presets. The main thing is gonna be this width knob turned all the way down. So I've got a very narrow sounding uh, guitar um, with not a lot of space added to it other than the bus at the end. Then we've got some tape, very, very subtle. And then another EQ at the end just to really like precision take out some of the frequencies I didn't like. All right, and then this is actually the same guitar just with an effect rack, hence the, the ER. Um, this effect rack actually came from a Minta Foundry pack. It's super, super cool, really fun to use. So this setting is the dark wide tremolo. And so what he did, what Al Hug did with this is actually use Pan Man almost to make like a fake tremolo sounding effect. He got Primal Tap in there, Echo Boy Jr. The one thing I did change is this radiator was set to noisy and it was too much noise for me. So I just set it to clean. Um, but yeah, here's what it sounds like with uh, this crazy effect. So 
So yeah, literally the same guitar. I'm not gonna go over the other effects. It's the same patch from here, just instead of RC20, got the effect rack. All right, now this lead guitar section is, again, just two of the same takes, one pan to the right, one pan to the left slightly. I'll show you together at the end what it sounds like. The lower one is just dropped an octave lower. So yeah, nothing crazy there. Um, as far as the effects go, we've just got some EQ. Again, another compressor, RC20 on this one. Oh, don't need a tour, I already know how to use it. <laughs> uh, kind of similar vibe to the last RC20, just a lot more magnetic, a lot more space. And then the width is taken down quite a bit, not all the way, but yeah, feel free to copy these uh, presets that I've been making um, and let me know what you guys think if you use them. Uh, some tape added back in and then for the higher one i did do a dynamic eq just to get rid of some of those peaks on the lower one i did not but yeah that's it for the lead guitar and the last thing here is probably my favorite part is actually this kalimba so i'm going to play it for you with no effects and this is literally just a little kalimba i got off of amazon for like 25 bucks highly recommend getting yourself some real instruments to play with really adds to like the ambience of a vintage sample I uh, just recorded this directly into my SM7B, a little bit of compression and EQ. Uh, I think I have like a preamp on my on my on my Apollo. Um, nothing crazy. Here it is, just dry. There you go. All the effects are really what give it the sauce. So here it is with all the effects, and then I'll break it down. Super cool. So had to go pretty crazy with this. Um, it's a pretty harsh sounding instrument. I recorded it a little too close, I think, in my opinion. Um, so yeah, it took away a lot of those peaks. Um, RC20 on this guy. <laughs> Don't need a tour. I just updated. That's why it's giving me this. Um, so I did do something kind of crazy with this. So I want to show you just this RC20 preset, what it does before and after. So here's just um, the raw sound with the channel EQ. And then here's the RC20 preset I made. So you can get that really cool like like noise, like almost like distortion sounding effect on each hit um, by just turning up the follow all the way up. I use the Apollo type of uh, noise here. And then a little bit of wobble, um, a little bit of, actually a lot of the space reverb some magnetic and then took out the lows made it a little bit tad bit wider like barely um, but yeah i really like turning up the follow all the way up on this noise uh, setting i think it's really cool after that we've got a little plate I'll show you guys that real quick lots of little plate as you can tell it's one of my favorite reverbs uh, infinity eq pretty aggressive again trying to get rid of some of those resonances that i didn't like and then what really brought it home for me is this cymatics origin movement and then this resampling knob sounds like this all together turn the bus back on so yeah that movement really gives it that like tape wobble i love it all right moving on to the percussion texture section this i used as like a transition this is also from an al hug pack uh, I think it's like the Fragments one. Uh, it's got a lot of one-shots in it. So yeah, just as like a transition, this actually is a lot of RC20 here, uh, just taking, uh, giving it the space and then taking away all of the stereo information. So again, it's like a very narrow, um, very long, just like decay reverb, um, but it's all in the center. So I don't know why, I just, I love the sound of that. It makes it sound like, old in my opinion vintage i guess um so it's it's not super lush and like like super wide it's just super narrow uh with still like a long reverb again that's just like a transitional effect now some of these other percussions that actually play during the loop are really awesome here's a first percussion let me play it just by itself here we go So yeah, this is really awesome. This is just me muting my guitar and going da, 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 da. And then we've got a channel EQ. You can see, took out a lot of the highs and lows. Little plate. And then pan man, just to have it kind of give it some movement. So 
sounds interesting, you know, by itself, it's not anything crazy, but in the context of the mix, I think it sounds really cool. This slide texture was really fun. So check it out. This is just dry. So it's literally just me rubbing my hands across the strings of the guitar in front of the microphone. Now what I did with Pan Man is I made a really intense uh, preset here. So this is width all the way up, smoothing all the way down, set to hard, the rate all the way up. So as you can see the flickering here, it's just going really fast back and forth. So here is here it is with just that. So yeah, it doesn't sound anything like the original thing anymore. Some plate just to give it a little little bit a lot of bit of space and then this crystallizer plug in this is really the sauce right here so check this out i had to tune it it's not perfectly in tune at 1200 cents so i did 11 negative 11 quarter note quarter note uh, and then the threshold i set it so that this wouldn't come in until after the original audio was done playing so you'll hear what it sounds like now right there super cool so it's like this just weird like swell of like almost like a just a dark like cinematic swell after the sound is done all right here's another gem if you want to get the sound of your actual room the room that you're in uh to add some more of that like vibe to it uh just set your microphone back away from you a little bit instead of right in front of you turn the gain up a bit and then just do whatever percussive like for me it's the clapping or whatever instrument you want to record um and it'll pick up more of more of the sound of the room. So here it is with uh, no effects. Turn it up for you. So you can like tell that I recorded it in this room. Uh, and then I added some space delay, which is just a stock uh, reverb. It's a 2.3 second amp spring tweeter. Uh, sorry, not delay, um, space designer. <laughs> uh, and that's just a reverb. So. This EQ just rolling off the highs, and then again the bus at the end. So it's almost like a room spring hybrid. Sounds really cool in my opinion. All right, this wood block, another one shot from Al Hug's pack. All I'm doing here is I'm using the space, really short decay, and then the width all the way down, and then EQing it a bit. So again, very, very much in the background, very narrow sound, just to give it some movement. All right, here's the vinyl texture that I made. Um, this is what I'm gonna show you at the end of the video after the mastering chain. So stick around for that uh, if you wanna learn how to make your own just endless vinyl. I'm gonna turn this up so you can hear it. So yeah, literally just vinyl, that's all it is. Have it turned down pretty far in the mix. And then the last instrument here is this bass. So again, this is just my guitar. Let me play it for you dry. Yep, so then down an octave. Uh, in Logic, that's Option, Shift, Down Arrow. Cool, and then I've got a channel EQ to kind of shape the tone of a bass a little bit and tame some of the low end because it was spiking too much. A compressor again all these compressors I'm just doing subtle compression so really you don't have to have the same compressor compressor you can just do a subtle compression uh, to tame things with really any compressor that you think sounds good and then some tape a lot of tape uh, to get that warmth in there sounds so good in my opinion cool so yeah, that's it for the sample. Here's everything all together. And I have a couple different sections, obviously. I'll play the full thing for you at the end. What we're missing now is the mastering chain. So I've got just a simple mastering chain and all it is is it is a compressor. Again, just around one to three on the VU meter. Virtual tape to add some warmth back in and then a limiter solely for the purpose of getting more volume. I'm not trying to actually limit the uh, sample too much. I'm leaving my output level at negative six. I leave all my samples at around negative six, so there's headroom uh, for the producer who might be using the sample, and so they're all kind of consistent. But as far as limiting the actual audio, I'm not trying to get too much on this reduction spectrum here. So 
this is the sample now with the mastering chain. And then without. So yeah, literally just bringing the volume of everything up. All right, so that's everything for the sample. Now, if you wanted to stick around and learn about this vinyl trick, all you need is a one shot and the plugin RC20. So what you're gonna do on a new track is load up your one shot at the start. Literally, doesn't matter what it is, it can be anything. Pull up RC20. We're gonna turn all this stuff off except for the EQ. We're gonna come in here and shape this up later. Uh, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna do this noise section and now what's cool is you have a bunch of different options on different vinyl i like vinyl 2 a lot and then we're going to set it up like this fall all the way down there we go do some ducking some flux all right so what what's going to happen if you set the follow all the way down to zero so it's not following the sound of the one shot and like ending the vinyl after the one shot goes away it's just going to keep going uh, then you can play with some of these parameters like the EQ, the ducking, um, whatever. If you want the EQ to actually affect the vinyl, you need to make sure to turn this routing off um, so it's not on post. And then you can actually control the tone of the vinyl. So I like to leave it around here, the tone down a bit, the width up a little bit. We'll do a little bit more ducking. And then... Cool. Cool. I think that sounds pretty good. And so you can obviously adjust this to taste. What you're gonna do to get rid of the 808, obviously we don't want the 808 in the beginning there, uh, is you're actually just gonna bounce this. And I've already done this here. So if you bounce this file, this lane, this track into a new track and then cut out the beginning of that 808 hit and then you're left with just the vinyl. Super awesome. So yeah, that's a great trick on just creating endless textures without having to really uh, do much else than mess with RC20 and make sure you have one shot loaded up. But yeah, that's pretty much it for this sample. I'm gonna go ahead and play the full thing for you guys. Just wanted to say thank you for watching up until this point. If you're still here, drop a comment down below what you think of this sample. If you have any cool tricks that you like to add to your samples to get cool textures and effects. Hit me up on Instagram. I'm always open to collab, work on samples together, work on beats together. Shout out to my boy Kid Capone. Go check him out. His pack is awesome. His Life and Sound podcast is awesome. He interviews a bunch of amazing sample makers. And yeah, other than that, here's the full sample. You guys have a great day. God bless.